Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and we are right back where I left you on the last video. We're back on the chicken coop slash goat barn. If you missed the previous video, we started putting this lovely used 5V metal on for the roof. As you can tell by that big hole behind me, we've got some more to do. Take a walk outside and give you a look from the outside in case you are new to the channel. Chicken's already out enjoying the morning. <laughs> All right, Mango, here comes a dog. Hey, Pop. Good morning to you, too. Here's what we've got going on outside. And before we get that metal on, we've got just a little bit more framing we have to do on each side. And that'll be the first thing we tie into. Got to add a board right there for the metal to screw to and also plenty for whatever I decide to use for a ridge cap, whether I actually get ridge cap or just bend some of this 5V, one of the two. Plenty so there's actually something there for it to screw to. You could get super fancy if you wanted to um, bevel it along that. But I, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not in a fancy mood today. So we're just going to cut it close and do some tracing. Shove that over there for now. That's just going to go right like that. And we're just going to... Can you see that high quality trace mark? See how she sits in there. It's beautiful. Oh, it is beautiful. Look at there. You know, sometimes Phil gets lucky. You can go ahead and do the other one on the other side. You can see my screws coming out. And that way it'll uh, just pull everything together as one. I can see how I've got this on this side gives it a solid backing for the very center of that valley. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. That'd be the next step. Get this side caught up to there. So I've got plenty of nail too for my ridge. I got plenty of strength in my valley. I did this valley just a little bit different than this side. It gives me quite a bit more meat as far as uh, just support underneath. But they'll both work and it should look fantastic once it's all covered up. And I've got some ridge blocking here. Same thing, nothing fancy. Just making sure I got plenty of meat and everything's nice and secured. And then we've got this valley blocked in on this side. Same thing got to do on that side next. It looks like this with nothing in it yet. We just kind of had the fascia board in place. And then we've got it blocked in there. That way it's just got some good solid blocking under that valley. So if remember I get some of this roof and puts a foot there, oh, you may give her a little bend -roo. You're not gonna disappear through there. So that means we are ready to start making our valley. I'm gonna try to just cut some of these panels of 5V and just make our own valley. You can get your own valley made, but if you couldn't tell, we are on a bit of a budget. So we're gonna make our own out of some of this used metal. The good news is with this center rib, it's really not too different from valley that you would buy. We just got a trimmer. Now, if a fella had a metal brake, you could probably slide this in a brake, score it, and break it. I don't have a metal brake. And Dirt Perfect sold his when he got rid of a bunch of his home building tools. 
So we may just have to do the old 10 snips. Now if Phil could use a grinder and they make tools to specifically cut this metal, but all that stuff costs money and a set of 10 snips goes a long way. I do recommend though, if you're gonna cut long ways and you know where you're gonna be, it does help to put some relief cuts across the ribs. Whenever you cut across it, the metal rolls naturally with the snip, so it's not terrible. But whenever you cut long ways with the ribs, it can't roll with you. So a few relief cuts kind of helps that. I do wonder though, even without a break, if I can score along that rib, if it'll be rigid enough for me, and maybe be able to just bend and break that by hand. Slide a board under there. Abs absolutely, it is hot today. Uh oh. But it worked. So my goal here is to just kind of try to work this down into the valley. How we need it. I don't know if that's gonna work or not, but it's what we're gonna try. So the length, as far as where it's at now, now we'll have to trim it obviously, is right about perfect. Um, I'm gonna put one screw down here to hold it and then we'll try to spin it over. Those are just gonna be temporary to kinda hold her where she needs to go. Okay, let's see if we can get her lined up at the top. Hey, and it'll just fit right down in there. How's it look on the... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that'll do, bud. It'll do just fine. Then we'll do some trimming when we get up in this area. I say let's go ahead and run the... I say let's go ahead and run the metal on this side. Get everything trimmed up, and we'll have a good idea how that's going to play out on the other side. Right there. I'm gonna put some double-sided. It's the same thing I used on the previous video for the overlap in the roof. Double-sided roof sealant. Where it meets the valley, I'm just gonna rub this metal down, clean this metal up just a touch. Give it a little bit of a fighting chance. Just stick on there. Car. How's that look? <laughs> Do you see what I did? That's funny. So here's what happened here. Uh, I didn't cut that sheet to the correct length yet. I just cut it off a full sheet. So, there I can just go ahead and measure up and I can just do the cut right here. It's supposed to be 88 three quarter. Be a little tricky up here, but yeah. 88 and three quarter. I 
don't think that looks bad. I don't think that looks bad at all, honestly. I like it. Beautiful. Oh. That'll work fine. So went ahead and got this side caught up, so we're the same on both sides. That valley looks really nice too. Oh, <laughs> oh I just noticed this. Daggone it, bud. That's all right, we'll probably, we can make that work. We'll back a little bit, but uh, the valley itself, Minus that rogue screw. Looks really nice on this side too. Beautiful. And from the top side, that's what we're looking like. Tar strip on the bottom, just like I did on that side. Let's, uh, let's run these here. Make a mark three. Remember these screws are just temporary, kind of holding it in place for me. And then we'll chalk a line on that, and that'll give me a good place to pull my measurements from. Where are my 26 hits? Right there. Sixteen and a half. Twenty-seven. That looks fine. Plenty, I mean ridge cap will. Ridge cap should cover. What do you think I measured? I don't think that valley looks too terrible. I, I wish I could keep the screws up a little higher, but that's just, I should have done my blocking just a little taller, but I don't think we're gonna have an issue with that, especially the butyl tape and all the tar, and yeah, I think we'll be fine. For a barn, I said it before and I'll say it again. You can do it two ways, the way you wanna do it or the way that makes somebody else happy. You're the one living with it. I'm the one living with it. I love it. We got that piece to get on in the morning. And we got these two pieces we gotta get on in the morning. And I'm saying morning because we got a whole bunch of school orientation stuff we've gotta to do today. School's getting ready to start back up and that includes for uh, both kiddos and shells. So we gotta do that stuff today. But uh, I'll meet you guys in the morning. First things first, we picked up that poplar this morning, rented their perfect truck and trailer to go pick up the poplar from Phil, Phil Aitchen's Timber Harvest, which is Logger Wade's family, sawmill. So we got that poplar picked up. 
Let's go ahead and grab the loader and get that up to the house real fast. I mean, to be fair, I could have backed the truck out in an easier spot, but... I'm able to do this without getting his newest piece of equipment on camera. I mean, he should appreciate this this camera effort. It looks good though. If you follow Dirt Perfect's Instagram or Facebook, you've already seen it. Man, it looks nice though. Wow. this we're going to try to shove under the uh, porch there and the rest of it we're going to go ahead and take back to the house there's two stacks here take that top stack over to the house then we'll come back and try to shove that other one underneath the overhang over here can't see my fork tips were just guessing it's a good guess that'll work free now fellas I'll give you a little push no it's not pushing the whole stack yeah whatever That'll work. I may try to finagle it a little bit more at this 755, but we're not on the metal. Whatever. Let's go. One last thing we're going to pick up real quick while we've got the loader. The other day I said I got a good deal on half of a Ford Ranger, and I think everybody thought I meant the back half. I did not. I know, I made you guys a promise. I wasn't spending any money on the Subaru to side-by-side -side project until the goat barn is 100% finished. But I got that for free, so technically, <sighs> technically a fellow kept his promise. I know, he's a sly one, you gotta, you gotta watch him. <laughs> oh yeah.
So this is poplar. Like I said, this is from Phil Aitchens Timber Harvest. I got this from, that's Logger Wade's family. Um, this is two common poplar, which is pretty low grade, but still perfect for what we're doing. We're working on a barn. We're not doing high-end cabinetry or any kind of flooring or anything like that. I think I paid 90 cents a board foot. Don't quote me on that. Um, I got 300 board feet all together. This was that first little stack you saw us bring over. Everything we do when we start, we will start on this side. We've already got the birds. We kind of need to get that situation sorted. So nesting boxes, roosting areas, shelves, more storage for feed, and just, you know, things related to the, things related to having chickens. We'll end up with that first. And I'm excited. It's here. It's in here. It's in the drive for the most part, way drier than it is outside. Setting up for success, right? Getting everything ready. So if we get a rainy day, we can come down here and get something knocked out. Oh yeah. These old doors came from a barn in, uh, well, I don't know where the barn actually was, but I bought these in uh, Vanderburg County. There's two of them. We were thinking about using them for the door pins or pin doors for the uh, goats. We gotta do some work. We may have to trim and shorten them up and rework them, but the hardware is cool. Chelsea wanted them, so we got them. Yep. If I don't bush hog this soon, I won't be able to find the bush hog to do it. Anything living in here? You always got to check. Yep. Come here. Come here. If only it had a handle or something. That's all right. If I move it all closer to the tractor, we'll have a better chance anyway. All right, so I didn't plan on pouring the concrete today. I was just kind of hoping to get everything rounded up and ready for the next work day. I was gonna try to build that loft in there, but given the fact that I've ripped some of the bags, the plastic is off. Well, we're kind of committed to the concrete now. I need to get a few measurements because I need to get some rebar pieces to throw in here. 42. Luckily for me, I planted some rebar last year and uh, hopefully, oh yeah, we've got a good, we've got a great, oh gosh. You watch out for those foam snakes. We got a uh, great, you get the joke. It's a, it's a rebar crop, it's, it's rebar I left out. Okay.
just a very confused would be in this wood screed. Of course, he built it as a home. I'm using it as a screed. So the goal of what we're trying to do, I'll show you a little bit here as we get it formed up, it'll start to make more sense. The goal is just kind of pour a curb right there where the door is, where the door would seal. All the way around the outside, we're gonna use chicken wire attached to the wood. It'll kind of go down and out and then get buried to keep critters from digging underneath. But obviously we can't do that right at the door. So, instead we're gonna use concrete. Now we do plan on pouring this whole thing in concrete at some point. But, believe it or not, it's actually cheaper to order concrete on a concrete truck than it is to buy a sacrete and pour yourself. Plus, it's, well, it's a heck of a lot easier, too. But that's not in the budget right now. So we're doing what we need to do to get the doors sealed up so we can get the barn sealed up and try to get it as critter-resistant as possible. What was that? A, a cricket? A cricket. Jiminy! from sonotube to sonotube, and we're just pouring it uh, flush with the level of the top of the sonotube. About to have a little bit of a storm. I got all the bags in the barn except for these. Those five ripped whenever they fell off the pallet. I've got these in here out of the way. So at least we won't lose those. I'm gonna try to hurry and maybe get some bags mixed and get them in there. But There's something satisfying about being in here and being out of the rain when just a few days ago there was nothing on top. Man, it is really coming down. So the rain appears to have stopped for the most part. Still sprinkling just a little bit. Actually, I think that's just stuff falling off the leaves. I wanted to do this side and that side of that sliding door, but it just rained longer than I expected. I'm just kind of out of time for today, but we're gonna go ahead and do this. So at least we can use up those ripped bags because those aren't gonna last long in the open air like that. At least we can salvage those. I still gotta, is this on there? No, I gotta put a screw in that yet. Just get that to straddle this. He's sitting all right. Dump that rainwater out. Oh gosh, that was an interesting color. All right. Oh yeah. Make sure I got plenty in there. And we'll get this out of the way and get the mess cleaned up. And we'll get that touched up. Okay. Out you go, boss. Oh, she's tingly, guy. Woo! Sure lights you up, boys. How you guys doing out there in the rain? Doing all right? 
clean off the form board so we can get the board off. Then we're just gonna push all this around. Let's go inside, shall we? That's it, I'm, I'm done with this one for today. I've, I've had enough, I'm headed up to the house. I got some editing to do. I gotta put something over this that's dripping on it. This is fun, this is good times. Make sure you subscribe. Next video will be fixing up and selling that lawnmower as a part of our trading up series because I gotta get that done. It's hard to sell lawnmowers in the winter. It's definitely hard to sell them this time of year. And then we're gonna hop over to the Subaru and Ford Ranger combination project just for like one video. I want to get everything combined and what I don't want out of here and cleaned up. And then we'll be back on this with all the material we have. So make sure you subscribe, stay tuned. It's always a good time, isn't it, fellas? Isn't it? Always a, a good, it's a good time, fellas.